on this episode of the Sports Opinions Podcast. I talk about the unwritten rules of baseball, new uniforms for the New York Jets, the demise of the Alliance of American Football, and NBA playoff outlook. And all you March Madness fans, don't forget the Final Four is right around the corner. And if you don't want to miss any of the action, make sure you tune into USRN, WSR, or UNB Network. All of them have full coverage of the games on MixLR.com. So without any further ado, cue the intro. What's up, sports fans, and welcome to the Sports Opinions Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Alex Cuesta, and this week we will be going without a guest. It's going to be me, myself, and I here talking to you about a bunch of topics that I want to talk about in sports. Got a lot of things to get to, and you know, every once in a while, it's not too bad to fly solo. Um, I always I have guests on often. Love talking to all my guests. My guests are absolutely amazing and it's actually just been a really long time since i've done a solo podcast um when i've gone solo lately it's been doing a lot of things with youtube live facebook live and doing um live show on spreaker so it's just kind of cool every once in a while to do the actual podcast portion of it solo so i'm flying on my own got a bunch of great topics to talk about things to express um obviously my opinions about hopefully I can get some people on my side. I'm pretty sure I'll get a lot of people against me with some of the topics I'm going to talk about, but that's what I like to do here. Um, Right off the bat, I'm not going to be talking about baseball per se. Uh, I know it's baseball season. I know it just started. Um, Kristen Yelich is having a great start to defending his um, MVP. The Yankees and Red Sox are leaving something to be desired. The Mets are winning and playing well right now. DeGrom looks awesome. But we're only so many games in. I don't want to talk about real baseball yet. Uh, it's When we get to 50 games, 40 games, 60 games, something around that number, then, then I will be much more inclined to really talk about baseball myself. Unless I have a guest on in the upcoming weeks that really wants to talk about it, I'm cool with that. But me personally... I don't. I pay attention. I like the Yankees. I you know I focus on all the games, watch them whenever I can. But I'm not super bought into it. Yes, the Yankees have a lot of injuries right now, but it's early. This is the time to have the injuries. So again, I'm not going to get too much into talking about baseball per se, but I am going to talk about something that uh, bugs me about baseball. I think I talk about it. I think I talked about it a little last year. I'm going to talk about it again now because it's something that when I'm solo and I get to talk about it, really. I get to truly express, I don't know, my disdain for this portion of the game. Um, and one of the things is, it's just some uh, things about the game. And I'm going to go into basically that the baseball purists are going to be pissed at me with what I have to say. And I'm not really trying to really rip on the baseball purists because every sport has their quote unquote purist. I kind of consider myself a little bit of a football purist snob. I hate some of the changes and some of the things that they're doing to the game. but Really, nobody is worse than a baseball purist. They just don't want anything, anything to change. And they you can't say anything, not even negative. You can't just have a conversation with them about certain aspects of baseball because they are just so snobbish and they like to pretend that their game is so regal, that their game is so refined, that there's so much respect in their game and that there's so much class in their game and this is a game that we talked about having cork bats that have had the um hgh and steroid issues that had a bunch of guys drinking and smoking constantly Uh, but this is the class personified game they i don't know if they like to think of this type of thing where the game is on the level of like golf or tennis in terms of like class because those are classy classy sports and i don't look at baseball that way baseball is a great sport but is baseball that super classy, respect everything. They said, no, no, it's not. It's not. And the baseball purists love to pretend that it is. And something that always annoys me about the baseball purists is their undying loyalty to these stupid, and I mean stupid, unwritten rules. It's, 
it's just so dumb that there's these unwritten rules that sit there that obviously if you grow up playing baseball, if you grow up really focusing and watching baseball, you know what they are. And if you're brainwashed enough to think that these things are great, then you just sit there and you stand by them and you clench your feet in the dirt and you dig in and you just defend them to the fullest. And I just don't understand, especially with Bryce Harper, now a member of the Phillies. A lot of people are mad at him. He's kind of has a LeBron-esque feel about him. I'm not comparing him to LeBron in terms of his greatness because Bryce is nowhere near LeBron's greatness. He doesn't have a championship, so we could get that out the way. And he's never been the best player in the league. He's been a really good player, a, one of the top guys. But Mike Trout has existed as long as Bryce Harper has existed, and that's the best guy in the league bar none. So Harper isn't at that level in terms of that, but I'm talking about just the fact of the pure hate. And it has a lot to do with this personality. He is a cocky dude. He likes to have fun, which baseball purists apparently hate. And he did something that drives the baseball purists absolutely wild. He hit a big home run, and he had a fantastic bat flip. Not Jose Batista bat flip, which was one of the most epic ones ever, but an awesome bat flip, which I have absolutely zero problem with dudes bat flipping after a home run. They hit a bomb, and they celebrate, as they should. You just did something awesome, especially if it's to take the lead or to run up a score in a game, like it get you more of a cushion. Absolutely celebrate that. Throw that bat. Have some fun with it. Why not? It, it, I always hate the double standard when it comes to what hitters are allowed to do as opposed to what pitchers are allowed to do. Pitchers kind of can do no wrong. You look at it, and how often have we seen a pitcher get a big strikeout? And they walk off the mound screaming, clenching their fists, yelling. No one has a problem with that. He's not, quote unquote, showing up the other guy by doing that. But when a guy hits a big home run because a pitcher made a mistake, he's not allowed to show any emotion. He just needs to run around the bases stoically, touch home plate, and walk away. Like, come on now. Why does that batter have to show this ultimate amount of respect to a guy that he just tagged up when a pitcher is allowed to yell, is allowed to... Araldus Chapman, when he was on the Reds, used to, when he used to close out a game, he used to do a roll, a somersault. Tell me that's not showing up the other team. No one had a problem with that. People used to laugh about it. It was something cool. And again, I don't have a problem with the pitchers doing it because it should be an emotional part. Sports are emotional. You should have that. But you really should not penalize someone for showing emotion. And it brings me into my next unwritten rule that I hate probably the most out of all of them. If a guy bat flips or someone does something wrong, the pitcher in the next inning or the next batter is automatically expected to peg that guy. Now, let's put it into perspective. One thing about being a sports fan, being a baseball fan, is we are just so prone to being okay with guys getting hit by pitches. Oh, he hit him in the fat part of the leg or he got him in the back. Like, you know, we're just, we're supposed to be okay with the fact that these guys are taking pretty damn hard balls. They're not super small. Yeah, they're not huge, but they're not small. These guys are able to throw them 90 plus miles an hour with accuracy. And we're supposed to be okay with the fact that this dude is now using it as a weapon and launching it hard. He's not lofting it over at the guy with the intention of hitting the guy. And the batter is supposed to just take it. And this is usually the next guy who didn't do anything wrong. He's just there. And it's something that you kind of know when, you know, Bryce Harper flips his bat, the next batter is expecting to get hit, which shouldn't be the case. That's stupid. For a sport that considers itself, quote unquote, you know, regal and respectable, where's the respect in that? What is the respect in hitting a dude that didn't even do anything wrong or even hitting the guy the next time up i've always said if a pitcher is really that mad about it make better pitches don't make a mistake you you know why is it that this pitcher now can use that baseball as a weapon and possibly hurt the guy i know like to the back and to the thigh are like the two safest places to do it but still that hurts i've never been hit by a pitch but I can't imagine that 90 miles per hour per hour anything feels good, let alone a baseball that's spinning and not far away. 
it's it's mind boggling that the same dudes that have this pompous theory about their sport is also okay with such a barbaric thing. I mean, if you're okay with that, then automatically that bat- batter should be able to charge them out and beat the holy hell out of that pitcher. Unless it's Madison Bumgarner, because he'll probably just lift him up and throw him because he's so used to just stacking hay and throwing cows at things. But it's just such an asinine concept that I have not been able to wrap my head around for the life of me. And I know uh, Matt Santos, who has been on this show a few times, he is one of those baseball purists I talk about. He is not going to like this portion of the show, and it's coming right out the gate, so he's probably just going to be cursing at me at this point as I'm talking now. But it's just something that I can't let just sit there anymore and not, you know, not talk about it because it is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm pretty sure Matt's going to then request to come on and debate me on this, and I'm fine with that. Come debate me. Debate me on why it's okay for a pitcher to yell – after a strikeout, it doesn't even have to be a strikeout to end the inning. It could just be like a really big at bat where it was a 14, 15 pitch at bat. And finally he gets a strikeout and that pitcher is going to give a nice big fist pump and maybe even a yell. Cause it's an emotional moment and that's okay. But that batter that hits a big home run to maybe, you know, it's a two, two tie and he wants to throw his bat excitedly. Like, yeah, maybe don't throw it at the other dugout. I think that's wrong. But if you're throwing it near your dugout and celebrating, Go ahead. Go ahead. Have some fun with it. And again, to the pitcher, make a better pitch. That's it. I'm tired of watching pitchers use baseballs as weapons and it be okay too. Something needs to be done about that. That is a stupid thing and it should be ended. That should be a warning to each bench. And and Or the pitcher should just be kicked out in general. If you could tell if it's right after a moment and you could tell it's not incidental, which you can tell, that pitcher should be gone. So that, that's just insanity to me that that goes on and it's okay and the baseball purist quote-unquote purist they to me they have explaining to do about that one it's really really dumb and it just shouldn't be allowed moving on from that topic that was a topic that annoyed me i'm gonna have another topic that annoys me we're gonna go with the happy we're gonna go with something that makes me happy the new york jets after five years of announcing and anticipation finally revealed their new uniforms. It expected has been hit with a mixed, mixed reaction. It's the internet age. It's a social media age. And I feel like even if people like something, they may say it just because it's cool to do. The, the Jets uniforms had a reaction of that they are absolutely terrible. Uh, there's so many people that are saying that, you know, they're trash. They don't look good. They look like the Eagles uniforms. And I, I really... I really don't understand what's the negative about it. Now, I'll describe basically what they look like now as opposed to what they were. And it's been 20 plus years, which I didn't realize. It's been 20 plus years since the Jets have had new uniforms, which is crazy because I remember it like yesterday that they changed out of their original Kelly Green with the 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 Jets on the side with the little streak over it like a jet fin. Um, Changing a little bit back to the old school, more 1968 look which Curtis Martin, Vinny Testaverde, Keyshawn Johnson all made look good. And it was a very, very respectable looking logo. It was the white helmets with the green um, oval with the NY in the background and jets on on it, you know, with um, the green or white uniforms, lines on the helmet. And it just looked very professional. It was a very professional looking uniform. This one is, it still has a professional, for me, it still has a professional ish look without, I don't want to call it, you know, being boring because the other uniforms weren't boring. But this one has a little bit of a spice to it. This one has a little more of a fun vibe to it. Now, one of the things that right away um, I noticed is that they went back to, their Kelly green color of the nineties, which is something that I have wanted to see for a long time. Nineties uniforms are one of my favorite uniforms. I think they're great, but they went to a darker green, which I didn't mind for a little while, but it was starting to get old. So they went back to the Kelly green, which I am a huge fan of the Kelly green. Um, Give a little description of the helmets, which again, it's getting naysayed. Apparently the helmets are ugly. I think the helmets are just fine. They are a Kelly green color. They have a nice shine to them. And on the side, it just says jets in white with the football underneath. Now I saw a really cool concept design with the jets 
And the Jets lettering stayed the same as the recent, the most recent. All the lettering style stayed exactly the same. So it's that same style Jets. The football, um, in like on the bottom of the E and the T, like it used to be. Just the rest of the logo was gone, and it's in white lettering with the white football. I saw a cool concept where instead of the football being there, it was a football shape with a jet in between. I think the Jets really need to look into that. I think that would be something really cool to incorporate. One of the things that I wanted to see on this uniform, which I don't have, is a jet somewhere on it. Because one of my favorite things is the old school jet logo where you just see the cartoonish looking jet with jets in between. I love that. They didn't go with that. But the helmet is just a Kelly green with the white jets and the face mask is black, which is something different, which is something that I don't think a lot of fans expected for the jets to incorporate so much black. It came out that there was going to be a black variation of these uniforms, and I'm going to get to those. But the, I like the helmet. First, just first and foremost, the helmets, they're simple. They're nice. They took away the stripe. It's a simple color scheme, and I think it looks good, and it will go well with everything. Now, they don the green. They had, um, when they did the premiere last night, they had players such as Sam Darnold, Quincy Anomo, Robbie Anderson, Jamal Adams, Leonard Williams, Avery Williamson, um, and Chris Herndon. I don't think I'm missing anyone out of that, but that was the group. No Le'Veon Bell, no um, CJ Mosley. I think they're too new. They don't have those in numbers officially yet, but they had all those guys donning the uniforms live, and they looked a lot better in person. There was a leak two day, uh, a few days ago. I'm recording this April 5th, so two days ago on the 3rd, there was a leak right before, and it was the exact leak of the uniforms, but it looks a lot better in person when they're wearing it than it did in that picture. But just going to go over what kind of the greens. The green jersey and the green and white combination have to be my least favorite. I don't know why. They're growing on me. I don't mind them, but they are my least favorite out of the group. Um, it's just a simple green, Kelly green jersey. They have white stripes um, along the shoulders that go from the front of the chest to the back. And they have the Nike logo, the number on the top, New York right underneath the um, the V. It says New York on it. That's a running theme for all of them, which people were making fun of. I don't know why they're making fun of that. What's wrong with putting New York in front of it? They're the New York Jets. And they don't have New York anymore on the helmets. So they put New York somewhere. I have no problem with that. Um, it says New York on it. The number is underneath it. It's outlined in black in the numbers. And then the pants are just that green again with the white. And they showed the variations of basically the color rush green on green or the green on white. Um, like I said, these are my least favorites. I don't know why they haven't grown on me yet. Maybe it's because it's the green with the green helmet. I don't, I'm not a fan of that clash unless it's the green pants. It looks better in the color rush style, but I, Pretty much, I'm going to have to get used to it because I think we're going to see these a lot. But that's my least favorite out of the three. Um, I'm going to go on to my second favorite, I guess. And that is the black, which is a lot of people's favorites because everyone likes black uniforms. People think black variations are cool. And I have to not lie, this black contrast does look cool. It's not bad looking at all. It's the same exact as the white with the arm colors. But instead of the color being, um, it, it's green again. I lied. It's not... It, it's not white. It's green here. It's green. The letters are white. New York is in white. And like I said, it's a black jersey with green accents, but the colors are, the numbers are in white. New York is in white. It's a cool looking jersey. There's nothing wrong with it. The pants are really sleek looking, black with the green as well. It looks good with the helmet because the black face mask gives it a really cool accent. And these are going to be fun uniforms. I don't think these are going to be used half as much but they are going to be fun uniforms that they're going to throw in there. Again, it's a nice, clean look, and I was a fan of it. Now, on to my most favorites. The white jerseys, I, have, I don't know why. I think they look awesome. Um, they have the green stripe. The, color, the, letter, the numbers and the letters are all in green. It's an outline black for the letters. I just think they're cool looking. I think they look professional. I think they're awesome. I really hope the Jets will wear these more often than not. And I think they look great with the helmet. It might be the accent off the white Jets le uh, lettering, but it looks awesome. And I'm especially, especially a big fan of the white on white. Don't know why Robbie Anderson was rocking it over at the premiere. And the white on white, I just think is just a super classy uniform. And I would like to see them down that a good amount this year. Um, another small tweak that they did, they said they were getting a new logo. I'm not going to completely call what they did a new logo. 
all they did, if you take the oval Jets logo that they had with the Jets in front um, and the NY and kind of outline in the back, they took away that NY outline and just above it wrote New York. It's not much difference. It doesn't look cluttered. It looks pretty good. I don't mind it. It's not much change for me. It's just going to have to change some of the apparel that I get. Um, the reaction, it's been, when you read about it, it's a lot of negative. I did a poll. It's not over yet, but my poll was most, I think it's 40 something percent. Love the uniform. Some people called it hot garbage. Um, most people can live with it. The overwhelming is in the positive. I think Jets fans are just happy. And I think a lot of Jets fans, especially my age, don't realize it's been 20 plus years. It doesn't feel like 20 plus years when in the 2000s is when it started, the early 2000s, watching Curtis Martin wear it. It doesn't look that different, but it is. It is, and it's a nice change. It's a welcome change. But overall, Sam Darnold said it the best. People will love these uniforms if they win in them. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the Jets wearing these. I'm looking forward to the Jets winning in these. And I can't wait to see what Le'Veon Bell and uh, C.J. Mosley look like in them. All right. Uh, Back to being angry. I don't want to be angry, but I'm back to being angry here because we're moving on to the AAF. So if anyone that listens to this show regularly, I was a big, big proponent of the AAF. I liked it. I liked the concept. I liked the speed of the games. I liked the talent level that was there. Was I expecting NFL level talent? No. But was I expecting competent football? Yeah, and that's what I got. It was good. It was a good D-League. And it just abruptly came to an end. It's pretty embarrassing. It is really, really embarrassing for not only the league itself and the persona of the AAF, but just for the people that started it. And honestly, one thing that I haven't been seeing talked about is the people that are being let off the hook. Now, I'm going to go over a quick thread. Um, I was reading something on Twitter. Somebody, uh, a bunch of people liked a tweet by Rich Ornberger um, at O-H-R-N, Berger, B-E-R-G-E-R. He did a whole entire thing about how the AAF ended. I'm going to do a quick few highlights on the collapse. Um, Players came back to hotels. They were kicked out of it. They were left to foot the bill. Uh, The money owed to vendors was from training camp and stuff, over $4 million. Uh, The injured and the reserve players are now going to be left to foot their own medical bills. Um, The staff got notices from someone named the board, an unnamed person, telling them they were terminated as of immediately, basically. Um, There's a bunch of people that were asked to stay behind and clean out the office spaces unpaid. And they just had some tweets from actual players. Um, Anthony Manzo Lewis. It's the things he said. His uh, tweet, unorganized is an understatement. Kicked out of our rooms. Parentheses, they weren't paid apparently. 17 hours away from home with a car full of my belongings and nowhere to go. Hashtag join the alliance. At, and he added AAF, Charlie Ebersol, and a bunch of different things. And fortunately for him, Brandon Silver is a quarterback. Uh, said to him, come over, brother. Still got an Airbnb for a few days. Come on, I got you. Unlike the at AAF. So the players feel spurned. Termination letter was an embarrassment. It talked about the good things that they did and this and that, but it's going to be shut down immediately. And some people will be asked to stay behind and do have some more opportunities. And it's just, it goes on and on and on. Salt Lake Stallions linebacker Gianni Paul at Gianni Paul tweeted, play game, break arm, league ends all within 24 to 48 hours. Now looking for an apartment, need help finding an apartment. You can't make this shit up. They're pissed. They're pissed. They weren't getting paid much as it is. And then they just get dropped on their face. Dropped on their face. A player from Memphis, Adrian Robinson, tweeted, at the AAF, I woke up to over a $2,500 charge pending on my account from the Senesta Hotel our team stayed in. I called the bank and and Memphis team president. My only option is to dispute the charges on Monday. Same thing is happening to other players on our team. And it, it, it's, it's, it seems never ending. It, it's all going. And 
because the NFL sent out a memo to all 32 teams that they can't touch the AAF players, the AAF said immediately the players are let out of their contracts. So I guess they were trying to make up for their wrongs by letting the players out. And the fortunate part is a lot of players have been getting gobbled up. So I guess in a way the AAF did its job. These players got game film. The NFL took notice of the guys that played well. Garrett Gilbert, I was an Apollos fan. Garrett Gilbert was the best quarterback. He ended up winning AAF MVP. The Apollos are the de facto champions, which take aim, awesome. He got signed to the Browns. And there's a bunch of other players that are now just, you know, getting signed. There's game film on them, which is awesome. Awesome. I'm super excited for those guys. But this isn't the way you end an organization. This isn't the way you do it. After everything you ask these people to do, not only the players, the coaches, but all the staff, all the training staff, all the reporters, everything. I just, I just had on Tom Alexander last week. He was now the team reporter of the Orlando Apollos. Great guy. Great guy. Awesome reporter. Did his job to a T. Was fantastic at it. And now he's just let go. He doesn't deserve this. Him and his family don't deserve this. He tried to jump on the chance of a lifetime. He said flat out, this is something he's always wanted to do. He wanted to get involved in the sports world. And I'm calling out to anyone else in the sports world. Go pick up Tom. You won't regret it as a team reporter. The guy's awesome. He's passionate about it, and he's good at his job. Go pick him up. But just for guys like that that just got dropped. Now, I'm going to call out a bunch of names, and they need to be held accountable because it pisses me off, pisses me off that these people are now nowhere to be found. They talked up this league. They were happy when the first week ratings were good, and they were all sunshine and rainbows when the players were going. And when things look like they were going down, when they needed a loan and they got it, no one said a peep. The guy that was left out to dry was this first guy, Charlie Ebersole, co-founder and CEO of the league. Sorry, Charlie, you talked a big game and you failed. Where are you right now when your players still need you? Bill Polian, he's co-founder and, and the head of football. Uh, Bill Polian gained a lot of respect from ESPN in his time as a GM. Where are you, Bill Polian? Where are you? You were always a guy that, that kind of talked and fought for the players on ESPN. Well, now the players need you. And the sad part is a lot of these guys were NFL players. Not, I want to say 95% of these dudes played in the NFL. So Bill Polian, where are you for these guys? Troy Palomalu, Heinz Ward, Jared Allen, Justin Tuck. Again, these guys were NFL players. You guys were all members of the NFLPA at some point. That's a union. These boys are your brothers. You're supposed to be there for him. Where the hell are you for? Troy Palomar was the head of player relations. Heinz Ward, head of football development. So these two guys were active in trying to help these players while the league was open. Where are they now? I hope they're helping. I don't know. There hasn't been news about them. I hope especially, especially those four guys. I hope they're helping these players out. Doesn't sound like it right now with the tweets. Sounds like they're being left high and dry. And guys that had good NFL careers and made good money in those careers that were trying to make another buck off of this league. Again, they were trying to do the right thing by helping these players out. But now that it's folded, where are you guys? These guys weren't getting paid much. $250,000 over three years. What is that? $80,000 a year. They were not getting paid much to risk a lot. Yeah, they had full health benefits. And I heard the health benefits were awesome. And that's a great thing. But now they're gone. These injured players have to foot their own bills. Where are you for? Tell me you guys don't have the money to help these guys out, to help get dudes hotel rooms, to get guys back home. Where are you guys? So yeah, I'm calling you guys out. Uh, Mike Pereira, Dean Blandino, both officiating consultants. Where are you two now? What are you guys going to do? Oh, you know, I know what you guys are going to do. You guys are going to go back to the NFL and do some more officiating stuff over at CBS, NBC, ESPN, Fox, or you'll jump on with the XFL. That's where you guys will go. So all of you guys, All of you guys, everyone I just mentioned, you guys have something to fall back on. You have something to do. Yeah, a lot of these players that were there do have stuff to fall back on. They had their own careers outside of this before they came back into football. And some of them are going to have a chance to play NFL. But what about the guys that don't? What about the guys that were depending on this, that were really working their ass off trying to get back in the league? What about the guys that were close, that could have used these next few games in the playoffs to get more game film on them? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And Tom Dundon, uh, the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, you did a nice thing by getting involved. Kudos to you. You lost $70 million. That sucks. You're a billionaire. 
And I'm not going to bash billionaires. Like 70 million, 70 million. I don't care if you're worth a billions or you're worth nothing. 70 million is a lot of money. And he lost a lot of money. But to just pull the plug the way you did, to not care about everybody involved in the league the way you did, and just you only looked at this as a business opportunity, obviously. You looked at it at the money you could make, obviously. You didn't give a damn about the people. And again, that sucks. Tom Dundon, where are you? Where are you? I know you lost a lot of money in this league. I get it. I get it. But where are you when there's certain guys that need you? These injured players that have to foot their own bill. They broke their arm. And they have to now foot their own bill, possibly pay for their own surgeries. Because the health benefits are gone. Or these players that are just trying to get home. Miles and miles away that were stranded in a team hotel. They're getting bills from the hotel. They have to dispute the charges. Where are all you guys? This is something, you want to end this league, right? You finish up taking care of this stuff. You finish up all the hotel payments. You finish up taking care of those injured players. You get guys home. That's what you should be doing. Not just closing it out. Dick Ebersole, where are you? You're leaving your son out to dry. Charlie Ebersole is the face, and he's the one that's getting the most flack because he went on and did the interviews. But where are you guys? So to all those guys, I'm pissed. I'm pissed because I was, I was very into this league. This league was, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was going to be great. And again, you look at the guys getting signed. It did do its job. It did its job. But to see it end this way, to see no one, none of those guys I just mentioned, to not see Charlie Ebersol, Bill Polian, Mark, uh, Mike Pereira, Dean Blandino, Tom Dundon, Dick Ebersole, and especially Troy Palomalu, Heinz Ward, Jared Allen, and Justin Tuck. And I'm even going to mention the other guys here. Jake, J.K. McKay, head of football operations. Tom V, head of business operations. And Keith uh, Ramboy, Rambo, I don't know how to say your last name, but you're on the board of directors. All these guys, where are all of you? Because you're needed still. Your work is not done. You guys might have failed and failed terribly, but your work is not done. There are guys that still need you, that believed in you, that invested in you. I believe in this league. I'm pissed that it's over. And right now, I'm just sitting here hoping and praying and thinking that Vince McMahon, Ricky Williams, T.O., I hope you all looked, watched, and learned something. Vince, you already failed once. This is your chance to do it again. Learn from this. Learn from this monumental failure. The XFL needs to be better this time. Obviously, you don't care you're a billionaire. You're going to do you regardless, but it needs to be better. Learn from this. Learn from the crap that went on. They had TV deals and they still failed. Please learn from this. Freedom Football League, I still don't know what the hell you're going to do, but Ricky, Terrell Owens, Ricky Williams, anyone else involved, learn from this, look at this. There were a lot of football guys involved here and they screwed up and they failed and they're still failing and they're failing worse now. What they're doing to these players now is a worse failure than the actual league itself. So I hope those two learn from it and I hope we don't see anything like this again. Leagues failing is not a big deal. Leaving guys high and dry and making them foot bills that they can't afford. Even if they can afford, they have no right to afford it. That's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Now that we can uh, unwind off of me being super pissed off, unwinding a little bit, jumping into the NBA, we're nearing playoff time and the playoffs are shaping up. In the Western Conference, Warriors, Nuggets, Rockets, Trailblazers, Jazz, Clippers, Thunder, Spurs, all clinch playoffs. They are all set. The West is set. It's just a matter of who's going to play who at this point. Um, Jazz, Clippers, Thunder, Spurs, they're all within a few games of each other. And it's, it's going to be exciting. Weird part about the Western Conference that I've taken note. It's a weird year in basketball. Because past few years, all we've been hearing about is Warriors, 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 Warriors. KD goes there, Splash Brothers. Um, Boogie Cousins, Draymond Green, it's Clay Thompson. Can't forget about Clay. Really seems like there's a lull there. The only thing we've heard about the Warriors is whether or not Kevin Durant's leaving them. Not the fact that they've won 54 games. Not the fact that they're still the one seed. Uh, it's It's been a weird year. Teams like the Nuggets have taken a bigger spotlight. James Harden has taken a massive spotlight. Um, 
Clippers have surprised people. It's been it's been nice. The Kings were cl- are close in ninth. They're you know they're they're definitely out. They're not in, but they, you know they made some strides. The T Wolves surprised people. LeBron and the Lakers failed. It's it was a very weird year in the Western Conference where the Warriors were not the only story. And it's cool. It makes it seem like there's parity, and we'll see. I really feel like the Warriors are still going to kick everybody's ass, but it's going to be fun to watch. You jump over to the Eastern Conference. The only guys I have locked are Bucks, Raptors. Sixers, Celtics, and Pacers. Six through nine are so tight. The Pistons are sitting in six at 39-39. Nets at 39-40, and tied with the Magic at 39-40. and And the Heat are right there at 38-40. and Those four teams are all fighting for three spots. So someone's going to be the odd man out. Me being a Nets fan, I'm sweating bullets. Because the Nets have such a tough schedule. Schedule makers hate them. Hate them. They have such a tough schedule down the stretch. And there's a good chance that they might sit on the outside looking in. So this is all shaping up to be fun, to be a very fun ending. And it's just what you look for in basketball. Now, the Bucs have won 59 games. They have clinched the best record in the league. Are the Bucs real? Who is real in the East? Who can challenge the Warriors? The answer is no one. Let's get that out there right now. Answer is no one. Who has the best chance? to make the series exciting. That's what we're looking for. Giannis Antetokounmpo is quickly, we already knew he was a star. We already knew he was a superstar. He's quickly becoming one of the top, one of the top players every game. You don't just expect to see him do it in flurries. You expect to see it for 82 games. When you get to that point where you're expecting to see near 30 points, 10 rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, every game, you've reached superstardom. Only problem for Giannis Antetokounmpo is probably the third best player in the league plays on the Raptors. Kawhi Leonard has shown again this season why before he sat out a year, he was considered probably right there with the LeBron and Kevin Durant in terms of talent. He's a two-way player. He's a beast. He can score his mid-range game. He's a throwback because his mid-range game is so good and he can score. He's quiet. He doesn't hit the big loud threes. He just quietly chips away, and anywhere between that three-point line, he can score. It doesn't matter who's on him. And I have widely considered him. I get flack all the time, but I widely consider Kawhi Leonard the third-best player in the league for a long time, and he's proving it this year. The Sixers, I still don't think they're real. Something about them. They have Jimmy Butler, who has played very well for them. Embiid is always good. Simmons still can't shoot at three, and that's his Achilles heel. You don't have to guard him in the arc. You can crowd the paint. That's his Achilles heel. So that hurts them is the fact they don't have a point guard that can shoot a three. He needs to develop that. Celtics, they're good. Kyrie's good. I don't know how far they can go. Oladipo's not there with the Pacers. And then you get down to that bottom four. And be realistic, none of those four have a chance. But it's exciting to see them get in. My Nets might sniff the playoffs and it'll be exciting to see them get in. Um, I have a piece that I'm going to write about them that should stir up some uh, anxiety amongst Nets fans, but I'm not going to talk about it here, but I'm excited to see how this plays out. The le- the season is almost over. It's been a really fun season. It's about four, three, four games for most teams coming down the stretch. And I'm just super excited to see how it turns out. And I'm hoping my Nets make it in. Um, I'm predicting Raptors Warriors finals. And I think the Raptors maybe will lose in six games. They'll make it interesting. It's a good, that's a good basketball team there. It's a really good basketball team there, but it should be interesting. But right now I'm saying Raptors Warriors, it's not official because things could change. I'm not doing an official. I don't think I'm doing an official thing at this year to really make predictions. It's so tough in the NBA, but I still think the Warriors are going to come out on top. So kind of doesn't matter either way. Uh, Sticking with basketball, one other thing I want to talk about is are the Russell Westbrook haters ready to give up yet? Are they ready to give up? Because it's time. It's time to give up. It really is. The dude just had a 20-20-21 game. 20 points, 20 rebounds, 21 assists. You know the only other player to do that? His name was Wilt. Will Chamberlain, like, that, that, that's it's really good. 
like really good. Like all time, all time best good, all time great. Oh yeah. And tonight I got the update on April 5th that he just clinched another season of triple doubles. I know he gets accused of being a stat hatter and you know, there's times where it looks, but you know, I've defended it before and I'm going to defend it again. It's the way they play offense. Yeah. Does it look like he's stealing rebounds? Maybe he is, but the team is a lot better. And Russell Westbrook gets the ball in his hands and is running right away and does not have to wait for a big to pass him the ball because they are a running team. Now, Paul George coming back into his own as a superstar has allowed Russell Westbrook to take a step back. He does not stat pad as much as he does. He does not have the 40-point, 50-point games like he did because he doesn't have to. What people don't realize is Russell Westbrook did what he had to to win games. And what he's getting accused of is exactly what James Harden's been doing before Chris Paul came back. And everyone praised James Harden for it. Oh, James Harden. He's now on a streak of 40-point games, 30-point games, scoring 50 here. Westbrook was doing that. Was he as efficient? No. No, Harden's more efficient. But he was doing the same exact thing, and he was getting demonized all because of his personality. He is a much more rambunctious guy, a much more in-your-face, a much more competitive, a much more of a throwback. He's a guy that in the 90s would have been so fun to watch. He would have probably been like a piston in the 90s instead. Or, no, he would have been on the... Seattle Supersonics, hashtag save Seattle. Let's get them another team back. NBA, what are you doing? Let's get a Supersonics team back. And then let's trade Durant there. And then let's put Westbrook, leave Westbrook there. Let's do this right. Come on, guys. But overall, he dedicated the game to um, the late rapper Nipsey Hussle. I'm going to show my age here. I've never listened to Nipsey Hussle, but from everything I've read, he did a lot of great philanthropy for the LA area. And a lot of the LA guys are really, and a lot of the guys in general that knew him are really hurt by his passing. I don't know the full story of, I know he got shot. I don't know why. I don't know what, but bottom line is he dedicated this game to Nipsey. 20 points, 20 rebounds, 21 assists. I'm sorry. The haters need to go to sleep. Goodbye. Go home. You're done. Russell Westbrook is an all-time great. Russell Westbrook is a superstar. Russell Westbrook is a top five player. And there's just no disputing that. And the OKC Thunder can make some noise in the Western Conference. And they are my one team that because of the players they have, I'm thinking can give the Warriors Ajita if they see him. So watch out for the Thunder. I made this prediction before. Me and Scoop did our brackets. I think we both had the Thunder going far and they screwed us. But mark my words, they're going to go far as long as Paul George is scoring. So we shall see. All right, but with that, that is going to conclude this episode of the Sports Opinions Podcast. Hope everyone liked the solo uh, go that I had here. Got a little emotional there. It was fun. But, you know, these are just fun to do every once in a while. So I have more great guests scheduled to come up soon. Don't You don't want to miss that. I have some awesome guests about to come on. Um, I will give some spoilers to that as we get closer to them, but definitely keep on the lookout for the awesome guests. Listen to the past. Like I said, I had Tom Alexander, uh, the former team reporter for the Orlando Apollos. Look out for what he's going to do in the future. I had Randy Lang on not too long ago. He's a New York Jets reporter for NewYorkJets.com. He's official. We talked about the uniforms and a whole bunch of fun stuff there. So I'm always getting these awesome guests. Um, I encourage anybody that's listening if you're just a sports fan and you have opinions, come on. It's named the friggin' Sports Opinions Podcast. Message me. Twitter. Um, something. Get at me. I'll give all my plugs again. I'm Alex Cuesta, host of the Sports Opinions Podcast. Twitter and Instagram. Shoot me a message at A underscore Cuesta 30, especially if you want to be on. Follow me there. Follow the Sports Opinions Podcast on uh, Twitter and Instagram. If you're going to follow it on Twitter, it's Sports Opinion 30. You can message me there if you want to come on. Instagram, Sports Opinions 30. Again, another place to message me if you want to come on. Go visit Facebook, search Sports Opinions Podcast. Click the like button. Follow it. You can uh, follow there. Message me from there. Anywhere. Come come on the show. And if you want to listen to past episodes, anywhere you can find a podcast. Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Apple Podcasts. Tune in. Just ask your Google Home or um, uh, what do you call it? Alexa. Yeah. Amazon Alexa. Ask any of them. Just ask Play Sports Opinions Podcast on iHeartRadio. You'll find it. It'll come up. You'll hear my voice. But again, everyone, thank you for listening. It was lots of fun. It's a nice change every once in a while to go solo. But 
look forward to hearing more guests coming on in the future. Again, this was the Sports Opinions Podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a good one.